Welcome to this edition of Great Books, a lively discussion of a selection from the canon of exceptional literature. Here's your host, Jack Hatfield. Welcome. Thanks for joining us for the Great Books Show. I'm Jack Hatfield. Our panel meets monthly to discuss great works of classic and modern literature. Today we're discussing the novel The Winner of Our Discontent by John Steinbeck. Marine? John Steinbeck, born in 1902, grew up in a small rural town in the fertile Salinas Valley of California. After attending Stanford University, but not graduating, he worked as a manual laborer and as a journalist while starting his writing career. He used his life experiences to write of human dilemmas set in the American landscape of his time. He is best known for the Pulitzer Prize winning Grapes of Wrath, but published 26 other books. The Winter of Our Discontent was mentioned in the awarding of Steinbeck's Nobel Prize in 1962. It is set in Long Island, New York over the 1960 weekends of Easter and July 4th. Ethan Allen Hawley is an honest man whose family fortune has been lost due to fires and failed business deals, possibly aided by members of the Baker family. Ethan is working as a clerk in a grocery store he once owned, but is bothered by his family's wishes for more money. Incited by the scheming of man chaser Margie Youngheart and by the stories of his friend Joey Morphy, Ethan is tempted to cross various moral lines to regain his place in society. He plots to rob Baker's bank and to buy the grocery from his boss Marullo after reporting him to immigration authorities. The bank robbery never takes place. Instead, the deported Marullo gives the grocery to Ethan, who he considers an honest man. Other plans result in Ethan betraying his childhood friend Danny by giving him money to drink himself to death. Danny's land gets Ethan a stake in a new town airport, which will be built after Baker uses a corruption scandal to influence the town election. Ethan's success seems assured. However, after his son is caught plagiarizing the I Love America essay contest he has won, Ethan is overwhelmed and driven to commit suicide. Only when he finds the family talisman in his pocket does he decide to live to pass it on to his daughter. Uh, the first question was, uh, what made Ethan turn from a good moral person? Well, he had a lot of people coming after him about making money. Uh, the fortune teller uh, told him that he was going to be making money. His wife mentioned money to him many times. Baker, the banker, talked about money. And I think somebody convinced him uh, <clears throat> that the way to make money, you had to be dishonest in business, uh, which is not an unkinditude, you know. It's like people who, uh, I've heard people say, you know, I could never be a salesperson because I could, I'm too honest. Well, a good salesperson is honest, yeah, right. <laughs> you know. And uh, there's this concept that if you succeed in business, you have to cheat, you know. Where'd that come from? Uh, but I think he bought into it. Yeah. I think he was really disappointed when he found out that his wife really wanted money, but she wanted it to be able to hold her head up. And somewhere in there he goes into how he wants to be a member of the society that he grew up in, which was the rich society, and saw that his children weren't going to be able to be members of that society. And it bothered his children, too. Yeah, and so he wanted the money for his place in society, more yeah. so than the things it would buy. It's how he got the money is the problem. Oh. <laughs> Here's a, on page 87 that, that uh, throws, a, I think, a slightly more nuanced um, interpretation. He says, uh, I think I believe that a man is changing all the time, but there are certain moments when the change becomes noticeable. If I wanted to dig deep enough, I could probably trace the sa seeds of my change right back to my birth or before. What does that mean? What, what does well, that mean? I, I, His birth? I, yeah, I thought that, he, that this was bringing in his um, his relatives. His genetics? His relatives were, because uh, he brings in, he said, uh, a lot of the people in the town made money through selling defective, for instance, selling defective rifles to the army, and it, 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 they're all kind of built on deceit. 
and he was saying that his great grandfather, maybe it was grandfather, was um, either they're, they were considered pirates or uh, revolutionaries, one of the two. And so I think that that he was hearing this all his life, and his ancestors kind of brought in this sort of uh, change that, that, that they wanted money more than anything else. It's kind of this duplicity, this kind of this looking at, at what you're doing in two different ways, one of them being illegal. I, I never got that idea I, I about, either. From his yeah. about his father. I thought his father attempted a to run a legitimate business and lost. Right. Uh, I said his and grandfather. And his grandfather was a whaler, the right. old captain, yeah. and he didn't seem like uh, he was a bad guy. It was his partners that burned down the ship. Right. Yeah, but the previous ancestors were pirates during right. the war right. with England. Okay. But they were commissioned by the Continental uh. Congress to be pirates, but, you know, they were doing it legally, but to England, they were doing it illegally, and they were Very pirates. So where's the line there? Are they good or are they bad? And he discusses that. On 57, he says, my ancestors, those highly revered ship owners and captains, surely had commissions to raid commerce in the Revolution and again in 1812. Very, very patriotic and virtuous. But to the British, they were pirates. And what they took, they kept. Yeah. That's how my family fortune started that was lost by my father. And he also talks about how people get money. And he says, nobody cares once you have money how you got it. So if you cross the line and do something illegal, well, then you can reclaim your virtue once you have money. You can be good. And you can be good. He was going to have a, a, a successful, honest grocery store after he got over the hump. After he got over the hump of doing something immoral to yeah, get it. Right. Uh, it, it was the way that uh, people lie to themselves about uh, their acts, uh, that uh, nobody feels bad. Um, Nobody has a guilty conscience, it seems, that they all seem that's just a part of the way you have to get by. Well, everything you do is moral. The only immoral people Somebody are else. The, uh, someone else. And he did say that, uh, that he had initiated the plans to rob the bank and things like that, but that he said that the events took over and now they're controlling which I thought was interesting. Fight. But, uh, <clears throat> the events. Oh, the events. Yeah. The government right. guy came he to the yeah. to rob the bank. He called it process. Yeah. So he, was, he thought he, he could get out of it, Cont but he couldn't. He couldn't. Yeah, yeah. so. I got the sense he, he felt that without mm. the money, the family respectability was on the decline. And that the nouveau riche in town there were running things, and the only way he could recapture that essence that existed before was to get money again. It was to be like them, just as crooked as right. they were. But you never had the feeling that he was a bad guy. He was a good guy doing some bad stuff, <laughs> I thought. <laughs> and supposedly, he thought it was only going to be temporary. Yeah, right. And then he could return to his virtue. Well, but he, I wonder if everyone else thought the same. I was. <laughs> <laughs> well, he made the argument when he was a soldier that he'd killed people, but he'd learned. That was his job. Put, put that it aside. That was yeah. his job. Right. He, he and compartmentalized, he's no longer a killer. Yeah, he compartmentalized his thinking mm -hmm. on how he was going to do this. Don't we all? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I didn't. I got the sense that. <clears throat> In reading this, I guess looking at it through today's lens, what he was doing wasn't all that bad. I mean, it's a moral, it's a moral issue. But in today's turning society, turning the guy into uh, yeah. why to is be it that bad? I didn't think it was all that bad on the basis of what you see nowadays. But uh, I mean, it was legal to turn the illegal immigrant in. However, he said, you know, that was a one of his biggest crimes was betraying his boss by turning him into the immigration authorities. And also, the other one was giving Danny money to go away and be cured of his drunkenness, even though Danny said, if you give me money, I'm just going to drink myself to death. Ten times. Ten yeah. times. Right. And, <laughs> and he, that's and he also happened. said drunks are liars, yeah. too. So. Yes, right. and yeah. that those are the, the two big 
faults that he committed. But robbing a bank, that was only going to be a yeah. crime against money, and that's not really an important crime. That's just a small crime. And uh, taking the uh, uh, the kickback from the drummer right. was, uh, hey, Marullo, he's never going to know the difference. Oh, and then Marullo, no, but, but he said he, originally he, he wasn't going to do that. Marullo is the one well, who told him to take it. it. Yeah, right, Marullo right. told him to take right. it. Yeah. And mm -hmm. after he gets his own grocery store, mm -hmm. he doesn't tell the guy that he's now right. the owner. Right. He says, mm -hmm. I'll take that kickback. Right. Yeah. You know, yeah. so he's Smart getting three six percent. I don't know what was what was the worst act. Uh, that about fooling Danny, giving him the money, or what he did to Marolo, who was kind enough <laughs> to recognize that he was a good guy mm -hmm. and give him his store. <laughs> that was a big twist. That Holy he, he didn't yeah, have right. to rob the bank at all, no. and he couldn't rob the bank because of circumstances, and then he gets given the bank because he's a good uh, at the grocery store because he's a good man. And he An also is man. given the uh, the property, which is essential to the town. Damn uh, nice. it. Yeah. It's <clears throat> going to convert it into an airport. For the airport. Yeah. Yeah. So he, that's going to be very worthwhile. And he, well, that's yeah. a legal he took thing a that people do today, yeah. too. He took a gamble on it, though, given the $1,000. But he knew Danny, I think, well enough that he knew what he was going to do. And he to knew my Danny mind, was honorable. That's, that's the worst thing he could have done. I don't think he knew that. I, uh, it was oh, sure. I think oh, he was yes, making he a did. bet on it. Oh, it was sure. gambling he on knew. it. Yeah. He said he knew Danny since he was young yeah. and that he was Better honorable. Than anybody else. And and so the, he planned to get that money as collateral <clears throat> but wouldn't ask for it. <clears throat> so therefore, he really wasn't committing that big a crime because he wasn't asking for the land. You know what's ironic, though? He turns down the job as Tom town manager because it would be a conflict of interest. What is this? Right. Scruples at a late date? Well, it's he's going to stop doing bad and get his virtue back. Mm -hmm. Well, remember, the other people in, in power there were being indicted right. for doing exactly that, so he's probably fairly scared yeah. of messing yeah. around with Protecting it. his own. You know, I, I disagree with something you said. You said that, uh, that kind of their time and what was legal and moral is different from our, our time. I don't think so. I think it's exactly the same. I think it's on a grander scale now than it ever was well, then. Well, sure. Yeah. Well, I mean, the, moral, the morality issue is, is still at the core of the discussion. But on the scale that we look at now, the type of things yeah, that we have going on now. I want to challenge that. On that scale, do you think most businesses are dishonest or honest? I think they walk a fine line. That's my, do you I think, think most do. businesses are more businesses are honest than dishonest. I think the successful businesses have to be honest I because think, they uh, come under yeah. the public scrutiny. They, 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 they come, they come under public scrutiny. The, the, the question is, what do you do with insider information? Well, because that's, that's breaking, what the movers and shakers were getting well, rich off of. That's Martha Stewart. Operation. That's breaking the law, and yeah. it's that was illegal then. It's illegal now. But, yeah, but that's how. Well, the movers and takers of the town were getting their money. Yeah. You know. Let me switch a little bit. The talismans seem to be play a mm -hmm. very important part of the story, especially in the ending. What was the significance of this, the talismans? I have no idea. It was a rock. It was a smooth right. rock. Well, there was a close relationship with his daughter when she was sleepwalking. She went down and had some type, some type of mystical association with that, and somehow he took that to heart. Uh, at the end, when he reaches in his pocket and the razor blades are gone, it's the talisman that's in there. It saved but, his life. Right, saved his life, yeah. However, that also came into play earlier in the story because when he went off to rob the bank, he put it in his pocket. Yes. And then it turned out the Department of Justice guy showed up right at 9 o'clock so he right. couldn't rob the bank. And then the Department of Justice guy said, Marullo's giving you the grocery. So that was very what good it, luck, and he had a talisman with yeah. him. Was, was that just a good luck charm, or how the did family heirloom? The family, family. 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 What did it, it, was his, it was his link to the past right. and the past glory of the family. Yes. 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 Aunt Deborah yes. was linked to his family as kids. Yes. Right. Aunt Deborah had so much to do with his upbringing and right. inculcated these moral, ethical things in his, right. his childhood. So. Um, so um, <clears throat> The talisman is, is what I had a question about at the end of the story, because uh, it was important to uh, him, our, our guy, and it was important to the daughter. Yes. She was fixated on it. But when it occurs at the end of the story, it seems to me that it, uh, it identifies with the son. 
because he's going to continue the tradition of the family. Right. And the whole cycle is going to start over again. And the son is going to be just like the father. A crook. A crook. Yeah. Because he, he plagiarized. And so that's what continues. What, what bothers me with that idea is that the talisman is, is so thoroughly identified with the daughter, but it, but it makes more sense to me that the uh, talisman symbolizes the uh, ongoing tradition of the family in the sun. Mm -hmm. Okay. I didn't get that. You're right. It says, yeah. I had to get back, had to return the talisman to its new owner, right. else another light might go out. So he wanted to continue right. this family tradition. The daughter and had no light. She was the... just a girl. Right. Oh. <laughs> Excuse me? <laughs> well, <laughs> as, 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 <laughs> yeah, let, let me back <laughs> into our corner here. Um, no, no, as she's portrayed, uh, she doesn't have an ulterior motive. She's not crooked. She's, she's just a cute kid. I didn't see anything duplicitous in her as opposed to the son or so many of the other characters. But she did the same thing to her brother that he did to Marula, right? Because she sent a postcard saying that her brother's essay was plagiarized, just like Ethan turned in Marulo did, to the did immigration. Did she send it? Did yeah. They? Yes, okay, she did. definitely, because she asked him about yeah. uh, about what plagiarism was and could he go to jail, and yeah. then she that sent it because she was crying and said, I didn't want him to go to jail. Right. Okay, I didn't pick up, and you're probably right, that she did send the postcard, yes. but yeah. then it doesn't matter if it's the son or the daughter because they're both furthering the family tradition, right. and so if she gets the talisman, then she can be... Uh, you know, a betrayer too. I thought it was his whole family. I mean, he's looking, at, he's reaching in for the razor blades and saying, grab something that reminds me of his family. And I think he didn't say it this way, but I think it reminded him of his responsibility to his family. Yeah. yeah, so he decided to live. He, he seemed to be an honest man up to the July 4th weekend, or up to Easter, Good Friday. And I'm wondering. The children are viewing a man that is scrupulously honest to that point, and it's getting them nowhere. Yeah, but, but you, you, you guys identified him as a crook. Did you? I didn't see him. I saw him as a good guy right. who did a couple of bad things. He crossed I the never, line a right. couple of times. Yeah, I never identified him as a the crook. Bad person. Uh, what do you think uh, we're planning to rob a bank is? But he didn't do it. No, right. so yeah, but he, still he planned it. He planned it, and yeah. he, he would have gone through. Right, exactly. If luck would have turned out. You don't go to jail for intentions, <laughs> unless it's revolution or uh, terrorism. And, and said, I call him a crook. It yeah. started out as sort of a game, you know, and, yeah. and then he woke up one day and realized. I could do. Decided. I could do this. Yeah, yeah I could and, do this. I'm going to get some dough. Has That's what he did. Inside of me, without me really thinking about it. So this is my new life. This is what I'm going to do. Well, everybody kept on telling him money makes money, so he had to get money <laughs> to make money. <laughs> yeah. I think we're so focused on him. I think uh, if we talk about some of the other characters, we can see their moral picture and how they shade things. Okay. How about the okay. fact that when we learn about Margie. She said she set this whole thing in motion and she felt she was to blame for what happened to mm -hmm. Ethan because she knew Danny and she knew Rulo and she knew the banker and, and she, she knew had the who tarot had the cards. Money. She had the tarot right? cards too. And well, well, that was a fake. And they all knew that, that was a fake. Everybody movie. knew her. Yeah. But she's the one that <laughs> went in to his grocery and started well, asking him her. about. Yeah. yeah, she hit on him and, and also was inciting him, him to get rich. Yeah. yeah. Let, right? Let, you should take a kickback from this guy. Let you know? me bring up something that has to do with all this. And, and um, I don't think she was a fake. Young Hunt. And, and it says, because uh, she was reading the cards, and she just stopped. And she, oh, and, that was the second them. time. Yeah, and so that was the second of, time. Of extra sensory perception. Right. And then, she, then, then to what it says is, uh, did you, he, his wife says, did you see something you didn't want to tell? And then she says, uh, oh, I'll tell all right. Once when I was a little girl, I saw a snake change its skin, a Rocky Mountain Rattler. I watched the whole thing. Well, looking at the cards, they disappeared, and I saw that snake changing his skin, part dusty and ragged and part fresh and new. 
Okay. Is she referring I agree with to, you. Metaphorically, she's referring to Ethan. Oh, yes. Yeah. yes. I, I agree yeah. with you, but it's the first reading when she read For Mary's cards that we didn't see that reading right. because she went into the grocery and said, I know what I'm going to do to you, Ethan. I'm going to read these cards and tell your wife that you're going to become rich. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. and, and she didn't read the cards. She decided that that's what the cards were going to say. I didn't say. get it that way, but you might be right. Yeah. So. And, and, then, and then Mary decided, yeah, he, he's going to be rich finally. This is what I wanted. And, and he was so devastated by the fact that she really wanted him to be rich, that his wife wanted money. He was well, faithful to his wife. Yeah. yeah. What, what do you think Very that, that Rattler wife? meant, that, that allusion to a to a rattler changing his skin. Well, him going from a good guy to doing bad things. Well, a rattler, yeah. I, I, you, you could argue, is a good, good thing to the economy or to the uh, ecosystem. But still, it's a snake that'll kill people, and all it did is change its skin. So I don't think it wasn't it wasn't a bunny rabbit. That, right. I think it's well, it's a part of her world vision. Mm -hmm. that she sees people as naturally duplicitous and she's had the college of hard knocks and married her first husband for the money and, uh, and he was she knows her die. way around yeah. this this yeah. lousy world you yeah, know. she she was at, at risk because her husband was her ex-husband was, was very die. sick yeah and that was her that was her gravy train she right? needed a new one and right. ethan was going to be the new right. one he right. was going to be her backstop right but he didn't take the bait he didn't no. but he could have at the end when she was telling him, I'm the only one that knows your secrets. You've got to come back to me because who are you going to talk to? Who's going to understand, understand you? And believe you. Yeah. Right? Because you've been telling all these lies and doing all these immoral things, but I know them. And so you'll come back to me. And then she asked for, for a percentage of his money. Yes. <laughs> Did you catch right, that? Right. I, I, I yeah. missed your point. What what was the point? Um, that she was, was she question? was the person that that he had to he he, yeah. he he had to have somebody to talk to other than the place. Yeah. Right. He needed somebody to confide in. Right. Was he going to stay right. faithful she, or not? Right. She, she, she felt that. that she could fulfill that. Yeah. She was position. still going to win. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. So yeah. maybe he lose his faithfulness to his wife later on. What do you think of? Um, uh, Margie's uh, appraisal of Mary at the end, uh, that she's tough. You don't right. even know her. She's a tough old bird. Mm -hmm. um, did he know his wife, or did she have a, a separate uh, thought process than was uh, obvious to him? Do we have evidence of that? I didn't think so. No, I don't know. Was it she wrong? Nobody. I don't know that she was wrong. I think she made, I think, she was a pretty astute judge of character. Well, she wanted money, but yeah, I don't right. think she wanted money uh, to the point where she would do something dishonest. I never mm. got that feeling. She wanted, so, she yeah. wanted social standing. Right. 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 Social standing. Yeah. Let me, we're kind of, we haven't got that much time left. What did you get out of the story? Cynicism. Cynicism? Yeah, that human nature is awful. Oh, I, no. the world's a I terrible thought place. It, no. I thought it was the uh, dual part of human nature, both good. You got the capacity to do good, you have the capacity to do evil. And he did both. Uh, and I think that's what the author was telling us. He was talking about human nature. And the moral compromises that you're willing to make. And I really like this book because it showed him thinking through all of these moral compromises he, he was making. Point. I, I, I yeah. thought that was excellent. Yeah. And also that he thought of himself at the beginning as a good man, but he said, maybe I was smug in thinking mm -hmm. that I was a good man. Yeah. And, and then gradually he keeps on stepping a little bit further over that line, a little bit further. Mm. I, I got a little different. I, I thought it was an indictment on society and all these societal pressures were operating mm -hmm. on him through the whole thing and he wasn't strong enough to, to stand up to them. Um, what would he have done with himself if he did? Just been a grocery clerk? Right. No, I think he, he 
he could have done such <laughs> Something else. Something this else was an indictment yeah. of America because they right. kept saying everybody's doing it. Because this is right after that. that of America television. or capitalism? The payola scandals. And the, yeah, quiz right. the quiz stuff. show yeah. scandal yeah. was about this. Charles yeah. Marullo told him in a grocery store mm -hmm. where money's concerned, the ordinary rules of conduct take a holiday. But they all got caught. I mean, yeah, and right. doing this, the story, the bad right. guys in the town mm -hmm. were all indicted. Didn't. What? Baker yeah. was the one. He was out of town. <laughs> yeah, but he was the one who turned them all in. I assume, yes. I don't know if that's true. Uh, because he was. Well, that's, that's why he was going out of town uh, in a hurry. Well, well, wasn't he guess. talking yeah, to somebody be. in Albany about it? Right. And then yeah, all they of a sudden, him, this right. He had to make a trip happens. to Albany, and then all of a sudden, he was gone the weekend when the indictments came out. Yeah. And Ethan knew that was going to happen. But he was one of them, too. He, he was one of the bad guys, Baker? too. Yeah. Yeah, well, he, yeah but his, his nobody... family burned the ship right. down. Right, it's assuming yeah. that his family burned the ship mm -hmm. down. So. One quick question. What's the story with the milk and the cat at the back door? What <laughs> I, Just thrown in for I, I just I couldn't thought. figure out what that was. <laughs> he shoot for, it away until, right, the, yeah, until the end, and he gives him the milk, and the mm -hmm. cat drinks it, and then he's gone, and he, he just disappears from the yeah, story. Yeah, I guess. So. Yeah. Well, you enjoyed it. I yes, certainly yes, did. Very oh, good. I think it was yeah. great. Very, very good. Yeah, I thought it was a good we great. could go on for another half hour just the different quotes from yep. this. We were playing around beforehand. If you can think of any, throw them out now. I liked all the, the pet names he had for his wife and children. Oh, that made me throw up. It made me <laughs> throw up, too, but I was just waiting for the next one. I mean, was, what, what point was he trying to make? Was he just a good time Charlie, or was he a supreme idiot? <laughs> I like the, um, there's no money, and there's not enough money. There's never just enough money. One of the things he said about himself, he was in this step of introspection. It's a, he's talking about himself and his mind. He said, it's a great library where it's recorded everything that has ever happened to living matter back to the first moment when it began to live. I thought that was pretty insightful for mm -hmm. a grocery store clerk. The whole question of the library and its function, too. Mm -hmm. It was up there with all the great right. world's knowledge. Right. But it was upstairs. But it was upstairs. Get us some, some of your favorite quotes. Did you get a lot okay. of them? He was silly a lot of the times, yeah. but he was telling the truth when he was silly, and nobody believed him. So the, there's this quote, I know three things will never be believed, the true, the probable, and the logical. <laughs> you know, his wife said, you know, I want, I want you to be rich. He said, I'll, I'll rob a bank. And he was serious. Right, right, and right. she thought, oh, you're just being silly. Well, and again and then. again, this happened. Right. But Later on, uh, that's times that what he chose. Tell him that he was being too silly <laughs> very often. And yeah, many of Shakespeare's plays, the fool's the smartest person in the play. Mm -hmm. How about that? Now is the winter of our discontent. Mm -hmm. yeah. Nice. You who handle poverty badly will handle riches equally badly. In poverty, she is envious. In riches, she may be a snob. Money does not change the sickness, only the symptoms. That's great. Mm -hmm. That's great. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the show. Join us next time when we discuss another great selection. As Aristotle said, the best way to learn is to get together in small groups and discuss great ideas.